Hey cats, it's your midsole man, Ed Budd here. Time for a blast of running related news. It's been too long. Loads going on here in the UK. We have Manchester and London Marathon coming up very soon. Focusing on Manchester today. Nike have clearly been watching my recent videos bemoaning their daily running shoes. They've decided to provide everybody with an update on their lineups for 2024 and even a peek at 2025. I've got all the new shoe releases as well, at least forthcoming stuff that could be releasing over the next few weeks. Let's get to it, people. Thanks for tuning in. It's always appreciated. Hit that subscribe button. But also give this video a thumbs up like and drop us a comment below for the algorithm. Danke schön. In the first story today, I want to cover those new updates from Nike. They look set to drop the Pegasus 41 model very soon in the next few weeks. The running shoe for all runners, apparently. This time, we've got a much needed midsole update. They've been with React for several iterations now. We've got React X this time around. I think it's a bit of an undeveloped shoe over the last few. It kind of felt a little bit samey. This one drops in June of 2024. It's going to feature that React X there in the midsole, a full unit of that material. We also have air units in the forefoot and heel. Now that React X stuff seems to be a little bit more environmentally friendly. I don't think it takes that much in terms of energy and resources to actually make it, though apparently it also delivers 13% more energy return or less energy loss, if you want to look at it that way, over the standard React. It's not a massive difference, I suppose, and some might be a little bit surprised to see no Zoom X here. Hopefully they're going to continue to use Zoom X in that fantastic Vomero model that they've got. Still one of the best Nike daily options out there. Whatever you think about the Pegasus, it still remains a very popular shoe amongst runners. Lots of people who get into running pick up the Pegasus. Kind of does lots of things reasonably well. I do hope the React X makes things a touch lighter and a little bit more forgiving underfoot, but I've got a feeling it won't. Judging by what people have said about React X in recent recent Nike models. They just seem to have got a little bit heavier, in fact, and that's the last thing we want. So if the Pegasus 41 isn't quite enough for you, then there's something else as well, which looks set to drop in spring of 2025. I mean, it seems like ages away. Nike are going to launch a Pegasus Premium. So this time it's a totally different model using both ZoomX foam and ReactX portions within that midsole. Though we do have something that Nike are calling sculpted air zoom. It's visible there across the full length of that midsole unit. So I guess if you like the duo pods that you get in the AlphaFly 3, then you're going to be like a pig in mud with this one. I have to state the AlphaFly 3 has become my favourite shoe of the year. I really wasn't too keen on it when I first got it on foot. does go to show that some shoes need some break in. It's my go-to now as an absolute banger for any effort level. Even if you want to run very slowly, well yeah, I mean it's going to cost you quite a bit per mile, but if you bought the shoes then you should do with them what you please, right? So that Pegasus Premium has the full air zoom unit in the midsole there. It's kind of strange, really. Though with air zoom, there comes weight, doesn't there? We know that. There's extra material there. That's no doubt going to add some grams to the mix. Now, Nike are stating that this is the first sculpted air zoom unit. But if you check out some previous Nike models, you'll see that perhaps that, well, it's partially true. There's the Nike Air Max 2015. It had a full length Air Max unit, of course, slightly different. Though the Nike All Out that we had in 2016 appears to use a very similar air unit within the midsole. Slightly less sculpted, it's just kind of flat, really. It's partially true for this stuff that's very similar in the recent past. People seem to have forgotten everything that happened before 2020, so. They do state that this shoe should work for any runner, so any sort of gait type. And the upper looks breathable enough there, doesn't it? Almost looks a little bit like the profile of the current Vomero 17, but... Yeah, a little bit less to it. I guess they're trying to reduce the upper weight a little bit to allow for the weight in the midsole. Let's hope it's not too sort of unbalanced between the upper and the midsole unit. So this isn't out till spring 2025. You've got absolutely ages to wait now. Though I've got to be honest, I'm not holding my breath too much on this one. Air stuff's been around for ages, really. It's not like it's some amazing new thing. Yes, we got Zoom X there in the top layer of the shoe. But I think all people really want is that Pegasus Turbo and there's absolutely no signs of that one. I can't help but see the Vomero 17 perhaps still being 
the best daily offering where you've got SRO2 and ZoomX foams put together. And that's already quite a heavy shoe. So if you're gonna add in some ZoomX, some ReactX, and some air units, well, the weight's gonna go this way, isn't it? It almost looks like that Puma Power Tape style reinforcement stuff around the lateral side of the upper there. You do need a fair amount of pressure to compress those air units. I do wonder whether this shoe's gonna benefit their heavier set runners rather than bean pole like figures of Ed Bud. A long time to wait on the Pegasus Premium, so yeah, we'll put that one over to the side for the time being. Now, the savior of this whole Nike update for me really is this quite frankly beautiful Bowerman edition of the Alpha Fly 3. The blue swoosh there, the icy white midsole and upper, the tiny little hints of orange on the air units and that back pull tab, and the awesome handwritten style writing on the side wall of the midsole. This is the most beautiful version of the Alpha Fly 3 yet and it will have to be obtained instantly on release regardless of the fact that I've already got two. Maybe I got a problem. Moving on people, moving on. Are you thinking of entering a marathon in the UK for next year? Well apparently you won't be heading for London, you'll be heading for Manchester instead. That probably will be the case for me in fact because I've gone in for the ballot for I don't even know how many years now and I still haven't got into London. And the same will happen again for next year. So a study was done by Leonardo Hotels. They wanted to find out, you know, from their customers I guess, which of the marathons is actually the best. So they surveyed lots of things, you know, asking people about which ones they were going to, which had the highest social interactions, the best temperatures and weather and believe it or not, Manchester scored highest. 9.4 out of 10 there with London 0.2 behind and then a further 0.2 behind for Edinburgh. I can see why as well Manchester was absolutely rocking when I went there for the half marathon in October and I can imagine with more people more runners it'll be even better there. Though if you wanted to do both for some crazy reason like some sort of mad running person who runs even when they're injured perhaps you may struggle to do that next year. In 2025 the Manchester and London marathons are going to fall on the same day. Now you can look at this in two ways I suppose it generates a huge amount of hype and interest around the marathons like a big marathon weekend it's a little bit like blur versus oasis or you can perhaps look at it from the perspective that the majority of people train for like one or two big marathons each year few are going to be racing more than two really aside from like influencers who don't really have to do anything else like jobs and all that other stuff like typical people are going to be focusing on two right so having them on the same day really doesn't actually cause that many problems you might actually find that some people that don't get into london or get into manchester or perhaps some people that missed out on manchester get into london so on so on i think they've got thirty-two thousand people taking part in this year's event on april the 14th you may be watching this like today on the 13th or maybe on the day of the marathon or after i can't wait i've got to be honest to get back to the now somewhat familiar territory around old trafford that hosts the start and end of the Manchester Marathon. I went and did that one back in October 2023 and there was some fantastic support from the locals. Loads and loads of people out there cheering everybody on. It was really quite something. I can highly recommend Manchester as a place to visit as well. I found lots of really down to earth, very warm, open people. It was a really nice place to go. Are you running Manchester Marathon this year? Are you going to aim to be there for 2025? Let me know your thoughts and your opinions on that one in the comments. Okay, we've got to get on to the new releases, stuff that's either just appeared for retail or will be appearing over the next few weeks. Looks like Brooks is set to launch the Ghost 16 at the end of April. It's up for pre-order now in the US with a lower weight than previous though, sticking with the tried and trusted outsole there. Though this time you've got DNA Loft 3, so I think we can have a slightly squashier feel underfoot. Nitrogen infused foam by all accounts here, though I reckon the 12 mil drop is either going to excite or repulse, depending on your requirements. I can't say that with a 12 mil drop, it really strikes me as a daily shoe that I could utilize. Don't really get on with very high drop shoes these days. That one's releasing for $140 and is on pre-order. I believe it comes out very early May. 
Adidas looks set to drop the Adi Zero SL2. I'm sure there was a group, a rave outfit called SL2. This time we have a switched up midsole and I think the shoe will be all the good for it. We have the lighter and less firm Light Strike 2.0 as the main carrier midsole frame and then we've got a much larger section of Light Strike Pro this time. It was just like a puck in the forefoot of the last shoe and that was a real dog that one. It was a terrible shoe i got rid of that very quickly felt like you were running on balsa wood and that wasn't a nice thing all of this is reminding me of the vomero 17 but i think we're going to have in fairness a much lighter shoe than the nike offering i'm pretty sure this is going to launch in the uk very soon so keep your eyes peeled and keep checking the adidas website it's probably going to appear on there first Another one from Adidas, the Terex Agravic Speed Ultra. This one's like an ultra trail running shoe, but I think it's really kitted out for the trails that you get like in America, they sort of buffed out dirt trails. We don't have many of those here because most of it's just mud. Lots of grip though here, I guess if you're running on those types of terrains, lots of cushion and of course some more rigid additions to the midsole which Adidas suggests are energy rods. When you look at the images, it actually looks more like a forked plate there uh, as it goes towards the forefoot of the shoe. Lugs around 3.5 mil here. So again, one for the US trails rather than the muddy mess we got here in the UK. They reckon this is a 42 mil heel stack. So I'm not sure how that works. Are there specific rules for like trail races? Can someone let me know? I'm not sure about that. It says it's a 42 and then 34 mil forefoot. So maybe you're allowed to do that. Maybe you could have a 100 mil stack if you're on the trails. I'm not sure that that'd be a good idea, especially for me. I wouldn't be able to get under any tree branches. This is 200 quid here in the UK. I don't think it's going to be too many takers on this one, especially over here on this sort of flooded island. I think Adidas trying to get onto the trail market there, but I think it's probably a lot of other shoes out there doing similar things right now. Not sure I need a Light Strike Pro trail shoe, but maybe you do. Okay, that's all the running news for the time being. If there's any cool stories that you've spotted, please let me know down in the comments. Very quick musical interlude. I've got two albums behind me, in fact, that I've been listening to loads over the last couple of weeks. I managed to pick up Kurt Vile's most recent album, Watch My Moves. It was only £10. It's like a double as well, two vinyls in there, and it's a limited edition one as well. I can't quite believe my luck. There's loads of really cool long jams on this one, and I always love a gatefold cover as well. Absolutely fantastic. I managed to pick that one up in a local HMV, so please check those if you're after that album, could pick up a bargain. The other one I had to order online, I can't find it anywhere in any shops in the UK. It's from Cheek Face, it's called It's Sorted. It's my album of the year so far. Cheeky, quirky pop, really interesting lyrics. The whole production feels lo-fi, but not at the same time. It's kind of strange. I think you'll either love Cheek Face or you'll absolutely despise them. So yeah, go and check out some of their tunes. You might be into it. You never know, you could unearth a gem. Okay, thanks for tuning in, people. Hope you enjoyed the running news today. Hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up like. Comment below as well to help with the algorithm. My name's Ed Budd, and I'll be seeing you.